Okay, so I'm just going to work on the on the edges there. So just steady myself on my block, and then if we just come over the edge there, and then you'll get a nice finish. Okay, nice and straight. Okay, there's different ways of doing it. Okay, and then we've got this edge on the other side there, so just make sure that those threads are covered. And because it's got the nice flow properties, okay, it will flow underneath the guide foot. So we're just putting a single coat on to start with, okay, and then we'll come back and we'll give it a second coat. Okay, it's as simple as that. There's a few bubbles in there, but so I'm not too worried about those at the moment. And you can see that it's dripping off the bottom, okay, because of that exothermic reaction that's going on in there. Okay, as simple as that. Now you will see that the high build will soak into around the guide foot area. So it will draw resin from the top okay, of your guide foot wrap. Okay, so just be aware of that. And we might want to push a little bit of resin into that guide foot in a moment. Okay, so what we can also do if you wanted to, sometimes people do have issues with um, air. You can, if you wanted to, just put that resin on with your spatula. So there's less air. Okay, just load it on. Doesn't matter. I'll, I'll use this as well sometimes. It's a bit of a, a bigger guide foot wrap to actually do, but sometimes with this it just allows you also to get a nice finish on the edge of your thread. Because you've got a nice strong flat edge to the, the spatula okay so you can get right up to that edge okay now it allows you to also work this high build into the threads as well with the brushes of course once the the bristles start splaying it sometimes can be a bit tricky to get a really good finish especially on the edge but this seems to work quite well Okay, so don't be frightened to, you know, just use different methods for yourself and then you just find what's right for you. Sometimes I coat the whole area between the guide feet. Okay, sometimes if it's a second hand rod and um, it's been beaten up a little bit, sometimes you just have to do that. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a minute. So, like I say, you can load this resin on using your spatula so you don't have to use a brush all the time and like I say you sometimes get less less air okay and you do get quite a nice finish with that as well I'll just continue it takes a little bit longer but I will just persevere with this okay and then you'll see that in my dish most of the air bubbles have actually disappeared while I've been speaking so it's got great air release qualities this resin and that's going on quite nicely just going to push that to the edge so I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes just to show you the the different techniques okay like I could say it takes a little bit longer but it just allows you to to work that resin into the threads. There we go. I'm okay with that. Okay. Got a bit more work to do on the other side, just on the, the guide foot tunnel there. I'm just going to switch back to my brush. I just want to get a nice edge on there if I can. Okay, so you can mix and match between your spatula and your brush so don't be frightened to use what's what works for you is what we're saying okay 
Okay, we got. Okay, so we just let that turn around just for a moment. Okay, because what we're going to do is we're just going to address the area underneath the guide foot. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stop the rod. Okay, I haven't got a problem with that because we're going to allow it to drip off the bottom anyway because we want to make sure it's nice and level. And this is one way of making sure that your resin is level. And you'll see that it's already starting to drip off there because I actually put more on that side. So you can use a, a toothpick or something similar and then you just want to just get a little bit of resin underneath that guide foot there. Okay, and the same on the other side. Okay, just put a bit of resin. It needs to go in there because sometimes that's the bit that gets missed. Okay, so just put a little dab in there. Okay, just to make sure because that's what's going to bind it to the rod ultimately. And I say the resin's nice and thin anyway, so it is soaking in quite nicely. But I just wanted to show you that if it doesn't quite take in that area, oops, it's got the shakes today. Okay, you can actually just put it in there. And sometimes when you're doing your resin, just these little areas around here are the areas that sometimes just don't get the resin. So it's always worth just concentrating on that bit there. Okay, so you can see that <coughs> the resin is now dripping off the bottom. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're just going to wipe that off. So we wipe off the excess. And that's happened for probably about 30 seconds. Okay, so we're just going to go in there and just take off those little bits there, just like that. Okay, I've got a spare dish for that. Okay, and then we're just going to do that nice and carefully. And then once we've done that, we just get the rod going again. Okay, and then we just let that spin and you can see that the bubbles are just starting to, to release from that because we've got a nice warm workshop and that's working quite well. Okay, so we've got good coverage around the guide feet there. You can just see maybe a little bit of the thread work coming through because I've allowed the resin to drop off. Not a problem because when we come to do the second coat then obviously we're going to capture that anyways. Okay, so there's my original resin. Okay, there's only like one or two bigger bubbles in there, but by and large, most of those bubbles have disappeared. And that's because on this Gen 4 product, it's got the XR, XAR air release chemistry. That's extreme air release technology that's been built into this resin. Okay, and you will be extremely well pleased with that finish. Okay, if you've got a few bubbles in there, few surface ones just use your the flame I like to use one of these because I can get sort of up close and personal to it okay and then you just use that just to take out some of those surface bubbles be careful not to cook the resin and also be careful with these because sometimes they do give off a bit of a carbon deposit not so bad when you've got the black thread but more important when you've got a lighter color so there you go that's how to mix and apply the high build resin so that's the Gen 4 product from America. Peerpoint is the UK distributor for that and it will be available in a couple of weeks time through our website to purchase. Okay, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to continue to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and also you'll find us on Facebook. If you've got any questions or queries or you want to know a little bit more, just get in contact with us and hopefully that will uh, help you in your rod building journey. Thanks for watching.